The idea for WTC View uh, started out as a play idea, which came about because on September 10th, I took out an ad for a roommate. And then a few days after, people started calling me and leaving me all these crazy messages about, I want to come see the apartment. I'm like, it's September 12th, and you want to come see my apartment? <laughs> it's a war zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was sort of an only in New York yeah. kind of story. Probably the early 2002, my answering machine was getting full, and so I thought I should just transcribe the messages, and I transcribed them all and typed them into my computer. And then in March of 2002, I had this idea of this could be an interesting sort of starting point for something dramatic. Usually as a writer, you're kind of presenting the world to people and right. saying like, here's this world I've created. But a story like this, you have all these set assumptions going in that the audience already has. They know what happened on 9-11. They know all the details about the towers and you know the attacks. And you know the best thing to do is then try to say, well, what don't they know? And, and I think for me, uh, when I started writing it, I was like, well, people don't really know what it was like to live in New York after 9-11. Everybody knows what it was like on 9-11. Correct. But, you know, again, my story really begins with 9-12 when I got these crazy I'm messages. Hotel. Hello there, this Three is Connor. Third, I'm interested in checking one, out the apartment show you listed on my noon. Now hey, we're calling good. about the uh, apartment here. thing. Coming uh, back to my house soon. and seeing, you know, that my house was a war zone essentially right. and suddenly I didn't really have a home which was home home and that's sort of where a lot of the ideas for the play came out of too the fringe festival it's kind of a great thing because it's a summer theater festival here in New York and the way it operates is you basically get a stage for like you know eight performances it was my first fringe festival I probably auditioned for six fringe shows and they were all terrible and then Andy sent me this one script and it was great and it was WTC View, and I was like, finally, this is something real. I remember also when Michael came in to audition, mm -hmm. I asked you after his audition how old he was, and you wouldn't tell me. Right. Because <laughs> it's like, I was like, I was like, he's so young, he's so young, he's so young. I was 22 when I auditioned. Jay Gillespie was actually, who plays uh, Max, the yeah. college student, was actually only like a year younger than Michael. I went in and read, and you guys all laughed. And I had a great time, and uh, and that was, and then after that, uh, we you know we started working on the show. There was a friend of mine, um, Mark Bennett, who was a casting director, and had had uh, recommended me to you guys uh, to come and audition. I remember reading with Nick Patanzieri, who played Alex, and we would read, we would just flip flop. He read Eric, and I read Alex, and then I read Alex, and he read Eric. Or no, he, you know, we would flip flop. It was so weird because at the end I walked out and was like, I have no idea what's going to happen with this play. I was like, I read everything. First thing I said was, who's playing Alex? <laughs> and she said, well, I can't tell you, but you could probably guess. I walked out, I remember that night, thinking like, I might get this, and if I do, I'm going to get Alex. I remember thinking, she's hot. <laughs> She's totally sexy. This is going to be fun. We had seen some Josies who were like in their 30s who it, we liked, but we realized they, that it, wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't work sense, because yeah. then Michael became their younger brother. Something happened with a girl who got cast. I didn't even know about the audition. I think I was out of town or something. And then you guys had another search and I ended up knowing that girl who originally was going to oh. do the part. So in the audition, it was like a really last minute thing. I was just getting out of school and I had my consortium from, you know, the school goes up and does their presentation for all the agents and things. And I think that it was Andrew, Andy, who saw me. I think I went to Andy's apartment and actually auditioned for the role, but he, Andy had contacted me and said, there's a, there's a part in this that I think you'd be great to play. And, I'd love for you to look at it. The part is very edgy and funny, but kind of imposing in a way and like, you know, intense. Be able to have some peace. And even though it's gotta be funny, it's, it's weird. Like I don't, I don't, I haven't gotten a lot of chances to play those kind of roles, at least professionally. Helena Webb, the producer called me and said, we want to cast you as Eric. And it was my first show out of school. And I said, yes, of course, absolutely. And then I was like, oh, but I have agents now. I should probably let them know. Helena, that's right. She called me up and I called her back and I said, I hear you're doing a play. 
She said, yes. And I said, well, I'll be in it. So, yeah, that's how I was cast. And I was, uh, I was excited about it. My initial impression was like, man, everybody's, everybody's young. I'm like, wow, but, but it was such a nice group of people and, you know, a good group of actors. The first time I met everybody was in the first read. And I was a little scared because it is such sensitive topics. Um, I, I don't think anybody was really doing any type of art forms such as plays or films really yet about 9-11. I just thought it did a great job of capturing the feeling of the city without actually showing the towers or, or the destruction. Have you been down there yet? We were able to create not only uh, a group of people that you could believe in that world and in those roles, but that in the rehearsal process were really giving and present and hard workers. Where do you work? I'm at Goldman in the International Bond Division. I met with someone who worked at Goldman Sachs um, and talked to them about what a, no offense to people at Goldman Sachs, what a miserable jury job it was, at least to this person. Actually, the person that I talked to was the perfect person because he, he in a sense, had a lot of the angst that you know, Alex was having with his job working at Goldman and it not being fulfilling and wanting something more. I have spent some time on the Upper East Side and definitely know, maybe not personally, women like Josie, but Don't definitely that energy and um, that type of woman. It was very garage indie, indie rock theater, if we can call it that. Um, <laughs> That Can makes I it sound that? a lot more glamorous than it was. Well, it was. We were in the East Village. At it's the, true. The okay, Bottle I'll buy Factory, that. I'll buy that. The Bottle Factory Theater on 3rd Street and Avenue B. We got a space that looked like an apartment. We were lucky in the, 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 the theater was tiny. It was very um, intimate. In the play, basically, it started in a blackout. And right. the sirens. sirens. We started hearing all these sirens. and Which was really intense. Yeah, the audience was, just, you would feel it. People would suddenly just tense up. Doing the play was a roller coaster ride every night. It was like, you know, once the first phone message started, it was like, ching, 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 you know, and, and this is it, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, and zoom, and there was no stopping it. Especially for me, because I was in every, I was on stage the whole time. I, I mean, I, I was on stage the whole time, but I was in every scene, and there was no turning back once we started it. And so by the end of the play, by the end, by the breakdowns and, 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 and the highly emotional stuff, it was pretty easy to go there because I was literally that tired. You could hear people crying softly throughout like Nick's monologue about being trapped in the elevator. If I remember correctly, I think someone gasped. Seeing people react that first night was just really wild. It's definitely one of the wildest experiences I've had in terms of doing anything Creative. It's the middle of summer in New York, which is hot and muggy, but mercifully we had air conditioning, except for this one day when it went out. I came out as Kevin and uh, it was just so blistering hot in there and I knew we had a long way to go and I, you know, and Kevin was kind of, had to kind of go around and case out the joint. Helena said, to Lucas, there's a air conditioning, you know, thermostat, which was also on the back of the stage wall. Right. So I kind of had to, I was like, well, maybe, maybe I can try and see if I can get the air conditioner turned on, you know, through all my fiddling and messing around, but I don't, it didn't work out, did it? She gave it to the right actor. That's all I have to say. Lucas, uh, improv <laughs> fixing the air conditioning was probably one of the funniest damn things I ever saw in my life. It was really a great process to be able to develop those characters in the theater and then shoot it as a film with those same characters and make those adjustments. The stage was very, you know, it was fun to just live in that whole Max character and it was much more fun to have all these zany hand gestures and these, you know, movements and, you know, so much easier to express. And then, you know, when you're doing the film, there's only so many shots where you can do that. Most of it is here. So you have to keep it all right here. And that was really difficult. I was the only cast member who actually wasn't still living in New York, I don't think, when we did the movie. So I flew back to New York to film the movie. I really enjoyed the scenes with Liz when we were really like on top of each other arguing. Eric! And we were in two shots because then we could literally be on top of each other. We could 
we didn't have to worry about stopping before the next person talked. No, and we could, and, I'm trying to and it was more organic, like the play. Open the drawer the same way with the same hand or you're in trouble. So I'm like thinking all the time of, I just so used to doing theater, that aspect of film. What, what do you call it? Continuity. Continuity. <laughs> a lot of what I did in the play was a little kind of over the top, you know, and it's trying to push for certain comedic elements and I don't know, it's just like, I just want to come out there and rah, you know, and then go back out, you know, but, but with the film, it was an opportunity to take that character and actually try and make him a little more human. You know, I wanted to try and find sort of the, the realness of him. There was a British guy who, uh, one of the, on the crew, I think there were a couple of them, it was oh, yeah. the boom guy or the cameraman or one guy. guy and he said and he was british and he Sorry, said that uh you couldn't tell that i wasn't it. so that was a compliment uh, i went to uptown when i thought i was going downtown and uh, still don't know my way around the film was much more difficult personally i had some crazy stuff going on with my grandmother passing away sort of the first day of filming it just was a very dark time, which I think can slightly help when you're working on this project. Eric? The Alex uh, scene where he has that long monologue, it just yeah. worked so beautifully in the movie. And it was, that you know, that's understand. like one of the climactic it's moments and it worked so well so in the just, movie. Everybody I felt was like, okay, we need to nail this. We can't mess this up. And I felt like there was tension, but there was also a lot of energy in the room in terms of just, Let's please get this right. I specifically tried to get as much information realistically about what was going on. Like, I think I remember calling you once about like, where's West Street? Like, how do we, like, where, where did we run down? I wanted to know, I wanted to map it out. We're just booking down Fulton over to West Street. And even though we're running, I feel cold all of a sudden. The only part of my body that's warm is my wrist where he's holding me and it is really starting to hurt. I was drinking Coke and coffee all day so that I could just try and appear as like as nervous and jittery without trying to actually do it. I had to smoke so much in the movie that I was smoking my face off. As soon as I got off set, I would smoke constantly. The last thing that we shot was the kissing scene with Michael and I. Oh, yeah. And by that point, he throughout the whole shoot had been smoking like the whole time. So by the time we got to that kissing scene, he had like, he just it was, his mouth was a total ashtray. I was really impressed, first of all, that it translated so well from stage to film. The first time we saw it, I was like, I was kind of like, I was kind of like, I think, you know, like holding on to something that wasn't there. Like, please let this have gone okay. Please let this be all right. Um, and then after it was over, I was like, oh, okay, that, that actually looked kind of good. Like, I think that was kind of all right. We decided to go to a bar around the corner, and I think we did several shots of We vodka. had a few shots before we went. It was the first time seeing my head, you know, that big, you know, like a house. I was really surprised by the film. Not that I didn't think the film would turn out one way or the other, I, I didn't, I didn't, it affected me. I feel that in the movie, the, the apartment is so much more of a character as well. Uh, you know, it's like it was a living, breathing thing right there with us. The claustrophobia of watching the movie can be a little overwhelming because you really don't leave that apartment. Right. It can be sort of freaky. I mean, it, you know, intentionally it was meant to sort of freak the audience out a little right. bit. And, and put them really in Eric's place. I got to keep most of my clothes. So when my friends would see it, they would see me in my clothes acting like me. And I think it was hard for them to watch me go through that. What I always liked about the script, uh, the play and the film was the fact that Brian turned the camera, so to speak, away from the towers and back on to the citizens of the city. When you see the film, it makes me hungry to want to attempt it again, but I mm -hmm. want to attempt it again on film. So mm. get on that.